Welcome to Defund the BBC. My name is Calvin Robinson, and this week I'm joined with journalist, radio presenter Kevin O'Sullivan. Kevin has had an illustrious journalistic career working for the Daily Mail in several executive roles, including show business editor, features editor, on top of serving as their film and the theatre critic. In 2006, transferred to the Sunday Mirror as a TV columnist. And of course, it's from his early appearances on shows such as The Right Stuff, providing much needed insights and commentary that we've grown to love his style and personality. I know Kevin from Talk Radio. Kevin, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on here today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, one small correction, Calvin. It was the Daily Mirror I was on, uh, not the Daily Mail. I would never be on such a right-wing publication <laughs> as the Daily Mail. <laughs> Actually, I wish I had been on the Daily Mail, but I wasn't. It was the Mirror. It's, it's good to diversify, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. So, Kev, the BBC has come under a lot of fire recently as one of their, their top crime dramas, Line of Duty. Um, for those who aren't aware, that's a drama that made references to the predatory sex offender Jimmy Savile. Now, a mum of five who Jimmy Savile had sexually abused has slammed Line of Duty for including the paedophile in their new series. As a TV critic, I'm sure you've sat through many, many crime dramas before. What do you think of this and how out of line are, are the BBC for even including Jimmy Savile's name in one of their hit shows? Uh, well, this is classic BBC. I mean, the thing about Line of Duty, uh, I was doing my uh, critic column uh, when it started for the first three or four series. And it, it was actually very good for about three series. Uh, in my view, for the last three series, we're on series six now, it has been going downhill uh, creatively, artistically, and in every way possible, really. Uh, and now here we are on uh, uh, series six. And the BBC, it's not famous for its self-awareness, but it is aware uh, that it is failing to serve its audience. It does not have many hits these days. And so uh, it has gone absolutely crazy about Line of Duty because Line of Duty is still trading on past glories and uh, they have hyped it to the rooftops and millions are tuning in. And of course, millions are finding it rather boring, uh, police procedure, uh, stupid acronyms, uh, incoherent plot, uh, and it's and now, of course, the the sure sign of a desperate drama. Uh, it is trying to be topical, you know, and uh, have some sort of relationship to the real world. So all of a sudden, they're talking about Jimmy Savile, and one of the characters, uh, played by Martin Compton, has got an opioid addiction, and so on and so forth. So they're trying to make it deeply relevant, and the more that they do it, the less relevant it becomes, and the more desperate it seems. And all they end up doing, as the BBC does so many times, is they end up uh, uh, insulting and offending people uh, who've got a right to feel that Jimmy Savile should not be bandied around as some kind of, uh, you know, tool that, that you can use to get more viewers for a stupid TV drama. So, yeah, they very much misfired on this, I think. I think you're spot on with this issue of relevance. So comedian and actor Charlie Higson slammed the BBC recently as well over its ageing of its viewers, as young TV execs believe that they only like gardening shows and tanks. Uh, Higson said the BBC is forever tying itself in knots about the ageing demographic of its viewer and that the BBC should be making more sketch shows involving a group of young people making comedy about the world we live in. Essentially, the overall point is that do you think the BBC has run out of creative talent and all these producers and execs that they keep employing highly disconnected from reality and what people want to watch? By the way, uh, Charlie Higson, who I sort of vaguely know, I've interviewed him a few times, very nice chap, but uh, very much on the left side of the fence politically and very much naturally a supporter of the BBC because left wing people, for reasons that escape me, love publicly funded bodies like the NHS and the BBC. Uh, so when Charlie uh, says uh, he worries about the way the BBC approaches its audience, uh, you should sit up and take listen uh, and take notice because uh, he is a natural supporter of the BBC. Uh, now, the BBC's obsession with its young or with a young audience, uh, I was about to say its young audience, it does not have a young audience, end of, and it never will have one. Uh, the BBC's audience tend to be middle class, old, living in the shires. Uh, they are, if you like, 
a kind of old fashioned British type of person that the BBC doesn't like. Uh, so it actually, uh, when one uh, older viewer wrote to the BBC only recently uh, complaining that there was nothing on the schedules for people like him, uh, they wrote back saying, well, the thing is, you see, we have given up trying to appeal to older viewers because they have such a variety of tastes and therefore we can't uh, encompass them in one kind of mission. As if, as if, well, OK, so forget old people because young people, they all like exactly the same things. What a lot of nonsense. Uh, it doesn't serve old people because it doesn't like old people. It doesn't like people who just want to sit down and listen uh, or watch entertaining old school dramas. Uh, it doesn't like people who just want to watch Strictly Come Dancing uh, or, uh, you know, light entertainment shows. It doesn't like those kind of people. It only wants young viewers. It's, it views CBBC, the, the children's channel, as a catchment area. They actually go around saying this. It's very important to get them young, you know, at the age of like four. <laughs> As if they, you know, right, we've got mind control. We'll start working on them when they're three years old. If we can get them when they're three, we'll still have them when they're 60. So they're obsessed with the young audience. Uh, BBC Three sums up this obsession. Uh, some time ago, they cancelled BBC Three or they took it off terrestrial telly. I think it was about six years ago because absolutely no one was watching it. They were desperately trying to be groovy. Uh, and they were, they were at that point, the BBC, you know, this uh, the, with its Rethian values, broadcasting on BBC such a timeless classics as Fuck Off, I'm Ginger. Uh, and Fuck Off, I'm a Girl. That was a series on, uh, the Fuck Off series on BBC Three. Uh, and uh, so they obsessed on trying to get young. It didn't work to the extent they had to abandon it as a terrestrial channel and just put it online. And I'll be fair, it's been very successful online. Uh, it has found a new way of existing. In fact, it's rather a modern channel. So what has the BBC uh, done to respond to this encouraging development? It's gone back to terrestrial. It's taken it off online where it actually did manage to get one or two young viewers and it's put it back on terrestrial where it will lose the very few young viewers it's got. The BBC uh, will never ever get young viewers and yet it's the only demographic that it's interested in. Uh, it's a very, very strange uh, enigma. Absolutely clueless. I mean, yeah. as a TV critic yourself, Kev, you must want to be on the lookout for new and exciting shows, not being shown constant repeats on BBC Two and BBC Four as well. Is this another issue where the taxpayer is paying for shows to be repeated, most of which you can get on Netflix anyway? I mean, you know, this has been said often, but, you know, it's jaw dropping that right now, uh, I think it started might have started this week, might have been last week. There's a new series for you to watch on BBC Two, prime time. Uh, I think it's on Thursday nights, might be Wednesday nights. Can't remember what night time. It's about eight, eight o'clock, eight, nine o'clock. Forty Towers. Uh. Forty Towers. What was that made? Like, like 50 years ago? <laughs> and they are re-showing it. They're re-showing Dad's Army. They're, so there are these ancient repeats, which it shows that, fine, these are TV classics. 40 Towers are a very funny series. And then, of course, the BBC ties itself in knots because it finds in these 50-year-old sitcoms references uh, not to its modern taste. Mm. Uh, so it is actually, at the moment, I, I kid you not, involved in a full-scale investigation into an episode of Some Mothers Do Avum, which was broadcast on uh, Christmas Day, 1975. Uh, in its time-honoured fashion, the BBC repeated it the other day, uh, and one viewer complained that the main character, Frank Spencer, played by... Uh, Michael Crawford was in a funny scene in a department store in the Santa's Grotto called by a cheeky kid. I'll say this word. I don't approve of this word, but I'm going to say it uh, was called a puff. Right. <laughs> and the BBC, so somebody complained about this. And uh, the BBC is currently, as we speak, spending our license fee payer money on investigating this heinous crime. I mean, come on, this is our money you're wasting. Why is the BBC spending 100 million pounds on diversity? 
uh, when it is putting in at prime time for our entertainment programmes like Gordon Ramsay's Bank Balance, which started off being watched by about six people and by the end of three weeks was watched by no one. Uh, there's a thing called This Is My House, uh, whereby a celebrity panel has to uh, guess uh, whose house this house belongs to out of four people all pretending one person it is their house four people are pretending it three people are pretending it's house. a celebrity camera has to go panelists go oh i think it's i think it's b you know I, I mean who would care this is a feeble daytime show at best it's on at prime time uh nine nine p.m they're putting that on uh, there's another program uh called pooch perfect uh, which in which uh, dog groomers uh, dye poor little dogs pretty colours, pink and blue, and they have a contest to say who's the best dog groomer. This is on at prime time. This is what they're spent. This is the uh, feeble amount of money the BBC is spending on programmes while spending a hundred million pounds trying to find out whether or not its employees are gay or not in its diversity program it is just it's it's a uh, grotesque it's bizarre this organization is so wrong-headed now it's hard to believe it really needs to recalibrate itself in a major way if it's to hang on to even a fraction of its license fee i never liked the license fee anyway but if it must have it it's going to have to be hugely reduced and only then if it stops wasting money on nonsense like 100 million pound diversity programs it justifies belief i heard you talking about this actually uh, with professor tim lockhurst on your show and this whole idea that some mothers do have them has now been outdated the values are outdated it, it kind of feels like they're leaving behind the generation that grew up watching these kind of shows and are still chasing that woke audience of younger members that just aren't interested in watching the bbc anyway um do you not agree with that? Well, yes. I mean, the thing about some mothers do have them, if you watch it now, I mean, the clown scenes, the pratfalls and everything are still funny in that timeless fashion. Uh, but it's slightly dated. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? It was made in 1975. However, you're right. I mean, what some mothers do have them set out to be, same for Dad's Army, same for all these other sitcoms, classic sitcoms from the 70s, The Lightly Lads, uh, Faulty Towers, as we were just saying, they set out to be one thing, funny. They just wanted to be funny. And that's what the audience wanted of them. Now I know for a fact uh, that the first thing that the controller of BBC One and BBC Two, Charlotte Moore, says to the head of comedy when he says, I've got a new sitcom, I've got a new, uh, a new uh, uh, sketch show, uh, hopefully to well to replace that god awful mess the uh, mash report but the mm -hmm. first thing she says he said this is in an interview recently he said the first thing she says when he says i've got a new sitcom she says where's the diversity in it it's absolutely outrageous the chase of the wrong thing is it frustrates the, me the first question it should it's a comedy is yeah. it funny? How funny is it? <laughs> After that, forget it. There's no other question. Same How many tick dramas. boxes do you check? Same for dramas. That's her first question. Where's the diversity? What about where's the entertainment? Where's the uh, where's the pace? Where's the narrative? What's the story? All these questions that should be asked of creative television productions are not being asked. It's where's the diversity? So you now end up uh, if you look at something like EastEnders or, for that matter, any old BBC drama, I don't care if they want to do this, if they want to create a fantasy world where 75 percent of the world uh, are in wheelchairs and, uh, so, so, you know, hundreds of you know, the vast majority of the room are from ethnic minorities, even though you're in the East End of London. If they want to do that, fine. But they're making a mistake. I think it's very strange the way that BBC producers and heads of drama and heads of comedy just want to create the, the fantasy world that they would like this country to be, as opposed to what it actually is. What about a bit of reality? Realism, you'll find, will, send, will sell better. It's just not realistic. They see, it shows more about the way they see the world than the way the world really is. It's fascinating. Yeah. But I've got one last question for you. In terms of reforming the BBC and scrapping the licence fee, would you say that Boris Johnson has bottled the opportunity? Does he still have it in him to bring about some profound changes or is it likely we'll be stuck with the same model for the until the next charter? 
Boris and the Tories are uh, Labour under the delusion that should they uh, attack the BBC, should they demand reforms in the BBC, that it would be widely unpopular. You know, there would be this groundswell of uh, disgust from the billions of people in this country who absolutely love and adore the BBC. Uh, I've got news for Boris and his gang. Uh, people would not be annoyed. They'd like it. Uh, now, here, you know, here's what should be demanded of the BBC going forward since it wants to take 3.5 billion pounds of our money every year. By the way, the license fee is going up to 159 pounds. It has been 157 pound 50. A lot of money, much more expensive than Netflix uh, and not as good, arguably. Here's what they should do. Right, it's got the, the BBC for a kickoff. It, it employs 20, nearly 23,000 people. Uh, most of them working at various, you know, lavish headquarters that are geographically correct, the result of geographical correctness. You know, so you've got, of course, Salford in the north and Leeds and up in the uh, Scotland. You have all these grand buildings around the country because the BBC, again, uh, not sort of forgetting that what it's supposed to do is make programs. It basically, for the past 20 years or so, it's been a major constructor of new headquarters. The headquarters in London, uh, in central London, when it moved from Wood Lane, basically the reason the BBC moved from Wood Lane to right in the middle of London was because executives, the 300 or so executives, middle management executives who earn more than £100,000 a year, 300 of them, more than 100,000 a year. Uh, they got fed up uh, the, traveling the five miles into central London to go to the flash restaurant. So they spent a billion quid of our money to build a massive great studio headquarters right smack bam by Oxford Street. So that, that's the major project. So this building, this geographical correctness has to stop. Uh, we do not need 23 thousand employees on the average radio show right i know this at my radio show at talk radio uh we have a producer an assistant producer a technical operator and a presenter that's it four people and though i say so myself it's plenty uh we work hard we get the shows together and i think sometimes they're extremely good just as good as anything the bbc produces the average yeah. bbc radio program has has 14 people working on it 14 uh, so got... it needs to cut its staff dramatically it needs to cut it, its wage bill dramatically it needs to close down some of these massively expensive shining temples the hqs around the country and here's another thing make contingency plans if scotland's going to go independent instead of building up bbc scotland which it is right now ready for this schism for this end of the british uh, union end of the uk when scotland split say it's the british broadcasting corporation scotland is no longer in britain it doesn't get the bbc you uh -huh. know. So that massive savings to be made once Nicola Sturgeon gets her way and Scotland heads off into the ether. No more BBC up there. It's not going to happen though, Kevin, is it? We're going to uh, keep the union together. <laughs> well, do you know what? I mean, the BBC, the problem with the BBC, <laughs> we could sit here and talk about this all day, is of course they are a bubble of their own making. Yeah. Uh, and this is the absurdity. What about recently when they said, oh yeah, it's diversity geographical uh, correctness, we're going to move around the country. Uh, Radio 3, you know, the classical music station, is going to Leeds. Great. Oh, that'll sort everything out, won't it? What, what they do with geographical correctness is they take their North London liberal elite uh, Remainer attitudes, their Guardian reading ethoses, and they head to Manchester or Leeds or Glasgow. So it makes no difference whatsoever. They are still the same people. Uh, geographical diversity will not sort the BBC out. It needs diversity of thought. They all think exactly the same. So that's another uh, reform the BBC needs to think about very seriously. And by the way, this new director general is not getting the memo. Uh, that is this kind of uh, uh, awful, uh, orthodox thought that prevails at the BBC, that if you, I mean, I know a couple of people, I know a lot of people at the BBC, and by the way, what I think about the BBC is it's uh, a, a mad, 
crazy organization staffed in the main by benign and reasonable people. Most of the staff sit there going, my God, this place is a madhouse. Uh, and uh, they, but these people, friends of mine who work there, you know, whose sort of outlook in life is not too dissimilar to ours, Calvin. They go, oh, no, 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 you know, you keep quiet about it. You, at the BBC, you, 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 you weep about Brexit or you get fired. Yeah. Uh, they've still got it. And Tim David, the new director general, isn't doing anything about it. In fact, all he's doing is pumping money into crazy, deranged diversity schemes. The BBC has got so many problems, so many things to repair uh, that you fear for it. I hope they sort it, if they can sort it, it, all these things out, if they can uh, reduce the wage bill, get rid of some of these uh, headquarters around the country, get ready to cut Scotland off and uh, teach the staff to think independently, stop frowning on Brexiteers, uh, and the people who and old people who like to watch the BBC as it used to be, if they could do all that, then by all means, uh, well, I, I personally wouldn't approve of it, but I would could certainly live with a publicly funded BBC, not as much as they get now, because they don't need all this money, uh, but uh, a, a, a much smaller amount. Sure, let's give them some money. I'll give you one last story. Um, a BBC One controller, who shall remain nameless, took over from that controller's predecessor, he said, desperately trying to avoid a gender there. And uh, uh, this new uh, controller of BBC One said to the predecessor, uh, any tips, any tips for me about how to run BBC, BBC One? And the, the predecessor said, he said, yes, uh, start spending the money fast because you'll have so much money you won't know what to do with it. That's the BBC. It is swimming in money. Don't ever listen to the BBC telling you it hasn't got enough money. It is, uh, it's, a, it's obscene how much money it has got. 3.5 billion quid a year we have to give it. Uh, and uh, that has to stop. But if we are going to give it anything, uh, I think we should give it nothing unless it addresses all the issues that you and I have just been discussing, Kelvin. Kevin, you've hit the nail on the head. On the head. That was incendiary. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and keep fighting the good fight. You're welcome.